All right, so how to use vSIM. So we will log in as an instructor into the point.lwdw.com and uh, I'm already logged in. Our Lipidcot representative should have already added the title to uh, our My Content. So just click on My Content tab and it should appear here. So click to access vSIM. The title, by the way, will be uh, individual uh, for each category. So for instance, this one is only for fundamentals. So if you're doing health assessment or med surge, it will say so. Okay, so you'll have um, mainly the, the vSIM is um, sold separately for, for each uh, category. So this is your description page. Uh, click vSIM for nursing to access it. So since this is vSIM fundamentals, what will be displayed here are the 10 fundamentals patient scenarios. Each category, I believe, has 10 patients each. So if you have health assessment, vSIM for health assessment, there will be 10 patients. If you have vSIM for maternity, you will have 10 patients and so on. Um, if you want to explore, here are, um, well, I already have my class set up so you can see my results here. If none, then of course there will be none displayed there. Here are some guides if you need to explore. Um, to get started is you have to create a class. You'll click on my classes. So let's say you've never created a class. So of course, this one will be blank. So I already have one created. So what we'll do is add new class and you'll just type in Medgar Evers <coughs> College. So it would appear here, Med CUNY, at whichever one I guess. So I'll choose that one. Program will be uh, either uh, LPN or ADN, whichever program you're assigned to. Class name, you just call it what you want. So let's say it's 141 or 029 um, or 274 what, whatever okay and then section if it applies if there are more than one clinical group so it would be good to have sections if they're under you but if not if you're only in charge with one then don't bother with the sections not really necessary you can um, fill out the time term location but it's not mandatory so only the the um, items with asterisks are really necessary so you hit create class and it will automatically generate a class code so this is the class code that you're going to give to your, to your student so I won't save this I won't continue that way I won't um, have multiple uh, classes so let's say oh it did create it um, never mind, I'll just delete that I guess okay so now you have your class so right now there are no students enrolled in there so on the student side we will be sending them this sheet here this was sent by Greg Greg Kinski as uh, um, assistance for us you know you can um, they sent us an X number of access codes for each student so this one is only good for one student so it, each access code is uh, redeemable only once uh, so we purchased this already uh, so you will send this page to one student this other page for another student so on so on the student side once they receive this they will simply copy this access code now to redeem it they will also go to the point and if uh, they've never created an account then they'll do so uh, so they let's say they'll cl click new user otherwise if they're already in there then they'll click on return user if you're a new user it will automatically prompt you for asking for an access code so let's say I redeem this 
access code and if I click next this will automatically open vSIM I won't do that because otherwise this will be useless so once the student is already in so they'll see their the vSIM under their title once they go in though it will prompt them to uh, enroll I believe um, when they redeem the access code it will ask them for a class code and this is the class code that you will give your students um, right here so this one this is the class code that you have the student enroll into so once they're in there so so this one for instance for um, this class I have seven students in there when I hit view I can see their their results so let's say I click on Rachel Ashton so it will tell me which vSIM scenarios they've already accessed complete with the scores how they're doing uh, as far as how you um, interpret this this will be uh, 1x is um, meaning minor they have uh, low risk of uh, endangering the patient 2x is uh, moderate and then uh, 3x will be a serious uh, risk to uh, patient safety as you can see she has zero so I have no concern I can also go in there to check her scores her submissions on uh, specific submissions on the pre and post um, tests as well as the how she did on the actual sim so let me demonstrate how sim works so let's say I'm in there as a student so I click on the sim let's say I'm assigned this week to Vernon Russell I click on him there will be six steps in each patient in all the webinars I've attended for vSIM offered by Walters Kluwer the consensus among the attendees from different schools is between six hours to six and a half hours so this is the amount of hours they allot for each vSIM patient okay so um, and most schools do not uh, most schools do not hold synchronous clinical hours meaning so let's say um, for my case how I've been doing it is I've, I've been holding synchronous clinical with them meaning uh, their regular clinical schedule is on Thursdays so I hold the vSIM on Thursdays, Thursdays from 8 to 3 so they they perform this they complete this during the, um, the clinical day for faculty which is an option if you you have plenty of clinical hours to to complete to catch up on then you can assign uh, an X number of vSIM scenarios uh, meet the student for pre-conference and um, have them complete this on their own time so let's say you give them um, four patients which is now times six and a half hours that would be equivalent to 13 26 clinical hours so you meet them for one hour of pre-conference for pre-conference for, for example and they have let's say four days or a whole week to complete the assigned patient scenarios then you meet them at an agreed future time to hold post-conference on all those patients so vSIM is pretty uh, th the first one would probably be, be uh, the hardest for them to work on because they're not familiar with it yet um, but it is quite extensive so step one they have a lot of reading to do so they read the report 
and there are suggested readings here which are linked to the textbook material it's highly suggested that they complete the readings uh, for each one for instance this one so it opens directly to the to the title because this is linked to um, a Lippincott textbook and so on so each one has uh, these are um, shall we say necessary information for them to care for Mr. Vernon Russell so as you can see it's it's not an easy activity so they have they have to read not only the background um, exemplars for the concepts covered for this scenario as well as the drugs that are ordered for this patient they have to complete these as well as bar uh, and then procedures for um, aspiration precautions as well as a neurological assessment after they complete this they proceed with a pre-simulation quiz it is I'm not sure as a student if they're able to take this more than once because um, I've heard from the webinar that it's supposed to be a one-time thing because this is their baseline so if they they click quiz me I think there are 10 questions that follow uh, no I, um, I stand corrected it's eight questions but I think it varies per Per simulation so they have a take a pre-simulation quiz after that they proceed with step 3 this is now the actual simulation itself the virtual environment here as they enter the patient's room or uh, check on the patient's um, chart for instance uh, it doesn't really tell them when they are finished they do have instructions here um, it, it takes time to load the the vSIM uh, meanwhile they can read this instead so it says here um, Vernon Russell is uh, here for right-sided stroke he's on a neuro unit it is 8 o'clock currently and this is the S bar report they received from the outgoing nurse okay so now it launched so this tab now appeared so now I'll, the, the student will now go see this patient when they enter the default is the chart so this is the patient's chart you have any flashing lights uh, indicate that there are new entries in there meaning there are new lab results for instance there are new medications order or there are new orders that were written and there were new entries on intake and output I'll go ahead and close the chart they can always go back to the chart right here EHR if they miss something so they can go back to the EHR uh, and they can review the information anytime they want uh, there are actions here so they can if they need to they can call the doctor or whenever they're done let's say um, they feel like they've done the, all that they need to do they can uh, go ahead and give patient report to the next shift so the time is here it is currently 8 o'clock on April 14 2020 the date is always current so as you can see I'm recording this today it is uh, April 14 it is also 8 for, uh, April 14 however the time is uh, obviously different students have the option to fast forward especially if the because the the avatars do speak and if they don't want to listen to let's say uh, patient responses let, let me demonstrate so let's say um, I skip these I'll go to uh, communication and then if I ask for the patient's uh, orientation for instance so if I click this are you awake so if yes the, if I'm the awake student want, doesn't want to listen to the uh, responses meaning it take it take too long uh, then they can click on the fast forward button that's an option now everything they do here 
uh, they as I said earlier this is like the real world there is no time uh, when they finish uh, it doesn't tell them that they're done with the scenario so it's like us going to clinical or no working going to work clocking in uh, receiving report uh, looking at the patient's orders the patient's mar and then going about our shift okay so they can do these repeatedly throughout the day again the the virtual simulation does not tell them when they've accomplished everything so the student really needs to look at the orders so if they see here um, medication uh, order I mean doctor's orders so the patient needs to be receiving normal saline at 100 ml per hour so therefore if it's not hung then they have to do so Losartan, uh, I don't know what time this is due, if it's 9 o'clock or 10 a.m. So they have to check those um, individually. Uh, it's better not to uh, close the chart. Rather, it's better to just minimize it. That way, um, it doesn't um, keep repeating. But it um, uh, doesn't really make a difference if they close it. Um, so they go through their assessments so this obviously is a stroke patient aspiration precautions so uh, definitely they should be um, elevating this uh, patient's head of the bed for instance the um, side rails uh, at least these two side rails here should be up this one's up this one's obviously down so these are all expected um, actions okay um, again, the, the scenario doesn't tell them what to do. So these are, uh, this is a good uh, way to evaluate whether or not the students know what they're doing in clinical. Assessments and interventions are always head to toe, but the students are um, forced to perform a uh, focused assessment meaning it, it, they have to use judgment on um, which areas should be uh, their uh, areas for focus assessment rather than doing a full head to toe although they have the option to do that um, drugs let's see um, IV access let me just assess your IV Okay. And at the end of the scenario, it will The site has no redness, swelling, infiltration, bleeding, or drainage. An infusion of 100 milliliters per hour of normal saline is running. Okay. Um, my suggestion would be just tell the student how to use it but I wouldn't hold their hand as far as um, telling them what to do for each scenario um, it's good to help them um, discover these on their own uh, because it does give them a, uh, a feedback um, at the end so let's say they spend a couple hours up to four hours in here so ne the next step is uh, number four. So let's close um, the vSIM. So they proceed with number four, which is now a post test. And then the uh, documentation, this will have to be um, written on a Word document and um, I guess submitted to you because I haven't figured out a place where you um, submit the assignment. The vSIM is supposed to be paired with DocuCare which we don't have. Um, DocuCare is like the Lippincott equivalent of SIM chart. Um, which is used for actual simulation in the in the sim lab. Then finally, there are guided reflections here <clears throat> at the end of each scenario. 
and that is the sim. So for each one, it's up to the clinical instructor if they want to do a post-conference after each patient or do post-conference all together at a future date. Okay, um, but again, the consensus for most schools is that um, they give this activity for each patient. It's about it's worth about six hours to six and a half hours for simulation itself, meaning completing the six steps, and another hour or two for pre and post conference. 